Welcome to Headlines Simsbury. I'm Karen Hanville. High praise went to Simsbury when a survey conducted by research firm Great Blue showed that 97.3% of residents give the town of Simsbury a high rating for quality of life, which incredibly is a 10% increase from 2008. First Selectman Lisa Hevner said, quote, we have worked hard as a community in the face of some very tough economic challenges to make sure that Simsbury remains a wonderful place to live and work. This survey validates priorities established by the Board of Selectmen, particularly in areas such as open space, the development of opportunities for outdoor activities like biking and walking, and maintaining Simsbury's historic charm." Unquote. According to the report, preservation of open space and areas dedicated to pedestrian use were top priorities for residents, with over 92% of residents viewing the town's activities in this area very positively. Questions on the survey featured the future of the town's senior center, commercial development in Simsbury, and the town's current digital state. Results of the survey showed that 58% of the town would be in favor of a tax increase if it meant a new location, possibly at the Performing Arts Center, uh, and more importantly, better programming for the senior center. The survey also made it clear that Simsbury residents are in high favor of modest development efforts to aid commercial development while maintaining the town character. Great Blue, with over 30 years of experience in conducting opinion surveys, was retained by the town to conduct this survey designed to determine resident satisfaction with town services, areas for service improvement, and resident opinion about projects such as the development of a senior community center. Simsbury High School's Visual Arts Department annually presents an art show to showcase the talents of the school's 9th through 12th graders. But this year, it appeared bigger than ever before, literally. Although many excellent examples of traditional art forms were on display in May in and around the gym at Simsbury High School, there was one student who definitely stood out. Jessica Shin is just a sophomore, but the higher than six foot tall canvas on which she painted her Alice in Wonderland scene stole the show. Jessica combined real flowers into the painted elements, depicting many of the characters from the story. Other works by Shin incorporating a dripping paint effect were also on display. Perhaps not as large in scale, but equally bold in creativity and choice of media were the fashion design dresses made of materials such as soda can tops and sheet metal employed by junior Abby Fazone and senior Zoe Wollert's lime green dress made of paint brushes and forks. Incoming Supervisor of Art Education K-12, Shannon Gagney, spoke positively of the show, saying, Every year, the art show gets better and better with more diverse media and concepts. It really is a tribute to the hard work and talent of the art teachers and students. In related art news, earlier this year, Matterhorn Mini Golf sent out an open invitation to commission artists to design goats for enhancing the appearance of its new miniature golf establishment. As soon as she learned of the project, Simsbury Public School Supervisor of Art K-12 and SAA Artistic Director Cindy Rem contacted the Simsbury High School painting teacher who assigned the community project to two of her outstanding students, juniors Brittany Ashmore and Morgan Bayona. The funds contributed for the project are being used to provide a summer art scholarship to a student in need. Two of Simsbury's art students are recipients of the Avon Association of Artists annual scholarships. Josephine Black and Shannon Berry 
both seniors at Simsbury High School have been awarded $1,000 scholarships to pursue careers in the arts. Shannon has built up a por portfolio of impressive drawings. Josephine Black's award was for her skillfully crafted 3D. An award ceremony took place in June at the Simsbury Public Library, where the artists, their families, and teachers celebrated the artistic achievements of all of the scholarship recipients. In pressing news, it's 2015 and people are still parking illegally in handicapped parking spaces. That is why for the month of June, it has been declared Handicapped Parking Awareness Month. Please never park in designated handicapped parking spots, not even for a minute. They are for those who really need them. Watch for additional programming about this issue on SCTV. Melissa Brett has some tips for keeping your grill safe and in working order. Hello, my name is Melissa Brett. My husband John and I own and operate Weldon Hardware here in the center of Sinsbury on Station Street. Today, I would like to share with you a few common issues that we see regarding maintaining your propane gas grill. We've been selling and servicing grills for many years and many grill owners do not realize that there are maintenance tasks that should be done every year. Now on an older grill, you may think you have peeling paint on the inside of the lid. It's not paint. The inside surfaces of a grill lid are not painted. They are either stainless steel or are coated with baked on porcelain enamel which cannot peel. Here we took a picture of a grill that was recently in our shop for service and the customer thought it was peeling paint. What you're noticing is a deposit of grease and smoke that collects during normal use. During use, the grease and smoke vapors slowly oxidize into carbon and collect on the inside of your lid. This deposit will eventually peel and it looks very similar to paint. The peeling normally starts in the center of the lid and spreads outward. It may come off in sheets or flakes and is shiny on one side and dull on the other. These carbon deposits are not toxic, but you might want to regularly remove the buildup. Fortunately, the peeling is easy to remove. Simply brush up all the loose particles with a brass brush before you start grilling. To prevent future buildup, after every grilling session, while the grill lid is warm, not hot, wipe it with paper towels or a mild soap and water solution. Another common issue that we see is that a grill won't get hotter than 300 degrees, even with all the burners on high. For over 20 years, all the regulators, like this, that attaches a gas tank to the regular flow of gas have included a safety device that restricts the flow of gas in the event of a gas leak. This safety device can be inadvertently activated two ways, putting the grill into what's commonly called bypass. The first way for the device to be activated is to leave one or more burners in the on position when the propane tank valve is opened. The second way is not to wait long enough to start your grill after opening your propane tank. The safety device on the regulator is active every time the tank valve is opened. The device resets itself when the gas pressure equalizes between the closed burner control valve and the regulator through the hose. If a burner knob is turned on before the gas pressure can equalize, the device will remain in bypass. The length of time necessary to wait to start the grill after turning on the tank valve is dependent on the length of the hose and the outside air temperature. Now keep in mind that the safety device reacts to a gas leak. If a grill is in bypass, the gas connections and hose should be tested for leaks with a soap and water solution. If the grill is in bypass, after checking for gas leaks, follow these simple steps to get the grill out of bypass. And you should also use these steps every time you start your grill. Make sure your propane tank is closed. Turn off all the burner control knobs and make sure your side burner knob too is off if you have one. Now with starting your grill, open the grill lid, turn the propane tank valve until it's completely open, wait at least 10 seconds, and then turn on your front or main burner to the high or start position. Press the igniter until the burner is lit. Now you can turn on the remaining burners to high, close the lid, 
and the grill should preheat to 500 or 550 degrees in about 10 or 15 minutes. Now if this doesn't work and your regulator hose is not leaking, you may need to replace the regulator. It's a very simple process. All you need is an adjustable wrench to remove the hose from the grill and put a new one on. Going forward, make sure you turn off all the burner knobs when you're done grilling. Then you should close the propane tank valve every time. A question we often get asked at our store is, does my propane tank have an expiration date? Yes. All 20 pound grill style tanks have a date stamped on the collar that represents the manufacture date. Any tank that exceeds 12 years from the manufacture date is considered expired and is illegal to be filled at that point. Many stores, such as ours, offers free recycling on old or expired propane tanks. Now, at least half a dozen times a year, we hear of a customer's grill catching on fire after not being used for a time. Most people don't know that almost all gas grills have a spider or insect screen that need to be inspected and cleaned at least once a year. We've had several customers who never have done this and have what's called a flashback, which is very dangerous and can cause your grill to flame up on the outside. To inspect the spider and insect screens, you'll need to be able to access the burners, and you may need to remove the control panel of your grill. In this picture, you can see the end of a burner tube with some screening around it. That's your insect screen. If there's dust or dirt on the screens, remove the burners to clean the screens, which is usually attached with one or two screws. Lightly brush the insect screens with a soft bristle brush such as an old toothbrush. Do not clean the insect screens with hard or sharp tools. Do not dislodge the screens or enlarge the screen openings. And lightly tap the burners to get the debris and dirt out of the burner tube. Once the insect screens and burners are cleaned, put back the burners. If the insect screen becomes damaged or cannot be cleaned, you should replace your burner tubes. We encourage you to review your specific grills manual. There are regular maintenance tasks that can extend the life of your grill and keep you safe. If you have any questions about your gas grill, don't hesitate to ask us. And if you have a topic that we like featured on this segment, let us know. Visit our website at www.weldonhardware.com. I look forward to the next edition of Headline Sinsbury. Remember, we're at your service. Thank you and God bless. Today, the Pets on Wheels organization wants you to know about their mission of spreading joy, love, and laughter through animals. They have helped senior citizens, veterans, and people from all backgrounds that have a combination of financial need and emotional or physical limitations benefit from animal companionship. Amazingly, Pets on Wheels not only pays adoption fees for adopting a homeless animal from a local shelter, they also provide for veterinarian care and transportation to the vet if needed. Remember, June is the time to renew your dog licenses, which you can do at the town hall during regular business hours. The Hartford Symphony Orchestra's Talcott Mountain Music Festival continues in its 20th season. On July 3rd, Simsbury will be celebrating America with music and fireworks at the Performing Arts Center starting at 7.30 p.m. The celebration will be led by guest conductor and former Simsbury High School student Eric Dudley and the vocal forces of the Asylum Hill Congregational Church Choir. The program will feature patriotic favorites, music of the Americas, including spirituals, South, Amer South American folk music, Dixieland, and more. In case of rain, the concert will be rescheduled to Saturday, July 4th at 7.30. Subscriptions to the season are available, as are lawn tickets for adults and children in advance or at the gate. Gates open at 6 p.m., and the night also features free family activities such as music-themed games and crafts, the instrument zoo, and youth performances. For more ticketing information, you can contact the Hartford Symphony Orchestra Ticket Services at 987-5900 or visit them online at hartfordsymphony.org. Mary Doyle Clark is here and she's going to give you this week's Senior Center update. 
Hi, I'm Mary Doyle Clark, and here's what's going on at the Simsbury Senior Center. Celebrate July 4th a bit early at our hot dog barbecue on Thursday, July 2nd at 12 noon. We'll be serving grilled hot dogs, baked beans, coleslaw, chips, drinks and dessert outside on the lawn. The cost is only $2. Please sign up through the Senior Center. Join us at the Simsbury Library on Tuesday, July 7th at 1.30 p.m. for a special presentation, Keeping the Home Fires Burning, Families on the Home Front in World War II. Historian John Cilio will take you back to the America of 1939 to 1945 and discuss what families, particularly women, were doing while their men were fighting the war. Many women joined the workforce either at home or by joining the military themselves, changing the face of America forever. The presentation includes slides of vintage photos set to 1940s music. This free event is co-sponsored by the Simsbury Senior Center and the Simsbury Public Library. The Senior Center offers a wide variety of day and overnight travel opportunities. We have upcoming trips to the New Britain Rock Cats, Newport, Rhode Island, Myrtle Beach, Point Judith, and more. Call the Senior Center to stop by or pick up a flyer for pricing and additional information. The Simsbury Senior Center is located at 754 Hot Meadow Street in the Eno Memorial Hall building. Our hours are Mondays, 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m., Tuesday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., and Fridays, 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Call us at 860-658-3273 for additional information or go to our website. Thanks for watching. See you at the Senior Center. Hello, my fellow Simsbury residents. My name is Tim Push. I serve on the Simsbury Meadows Performing Arts Center Board of Directors. I work closely with Tom Vincent, our facility and events manager, in a very important area that is critical to the success of our concert season and the reason for my telecast today. I'm here to ask for your help. No, not the donation type of help, but the actual use of your time type of help as a volunteer to support us in putting on these concerts. This year, we have more concerts planned than ever before, and we need more volunteer help. We will be providing volunteers for the Talcott Mountain series of Hartford Symphony concerts, as well as the concerts presented by outside promoters. These other concerts include the Abbott Brothers on June 14, Slightly Stupid on July 8, The Beach Boys on August 12, and Willie Nelson on August 22. If you would like to volunteer your time and effort for one, several, or all of these concerts that we've planned this year, please go to our website at www.simsburymeadowsmusic.com, touch the Volunteer tab, and sign up to help. This tab will explain the jobs to be done and the other elements of what it means to be a volunteer. You can also check on the website for all of the dates of the various concerts to see which ones can fit into your schedule. That's my message for today. I hope you will consider helping us and your community as a volunteer at these concerts and probably have a great time doing so. Thank you for that consideration. In important health news, women's bladder health will be the subject of a Wednesday, July 15th open community presentation and discussion. The presentation is part of Duncaster Retirement Community's monthly series called The Art and Science of Graceful Aging. Paul Tulikangas, urogynecologist from Hartford Hospital, will lead the discussion. It will focus on common bladder problems such as dropped bladders, urinary tract infections, frequent urination, and urinary incontinence. Attendees can also expect to learn about diets and exercises as a way to improve their overall health. The 3 p.m. presentation is free and open to the public, but pre-registration is required. 
To register or to get more information about Duncaster's Art and Science of Graceful Aging presentation, you can contact Fran Kent at 3805006 or email fkent at duncaster.org. Simsbury Free Bike is now open for the season. You can borrow bikes for up to 24 hours with a $10 refundable deposit at multiple locations, including Fitzgerald's, J. Foster Ice Cream, Live Everyday Physical Therapy, Mitchell Auto Group, and the Simsbury Inn. This service is available until the end of October to all bikers over 18 years of age. And for more information, you can email simsburyfreebike at gmail.com. The Simsbury Farmer's Market is celebrated its eighth birthday opening on June 18th. Every Thursday from now until the end of September, you can shop local from 3 to 6 p.m. and take advantage of the many offerings, including fruit, organic and heirloom produce, herbs, flowers, and plants, live entertainment, meat, eggs, Italian ice, honey, and maple syrup. There will also be handmade soaps and crafts for the kids. It is a great place to find a unique gift to bring to friends and family when visiting during summer vacations. The Simsbury Farmer's Market is volunteer run by the community and for the community. You'll find new things each week, so be sure to check it out at the Simsmore Square on Hot Meadow Street. An annual collector car show is coming up on Sunday, July 12th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. In case of rain, it will be the following Sunday, July 19th at the same time. All the great cars can be viewed on Iron Horse Boulevard and will also feature Rockin' Ron Sedaly Live. There will also be great food vendors and goodie bags. Please remember that you will need to pre-register your car at valleycollectorclub.org and if you need more information, you can call Pete Rocco at 379-4745. SCTV would like to recognize a couple of volunteers who have helped us behind the scenes this last month. Sarah Kim Kimball, a college student home for the summer, has jumped right in helping with the SCTV cameras. Her first project was covering the top dog contest winners and is now volunteering her extra time with the taping of programs in the studio and town hall. Another college student, Teresa Cortez, is busy with the animal control officer, Mark Rudowitz, taping footage while on his rounds. Watch for some interesting programming there. We appreciate the time you give to help us. SCTV is Simsbury's TV station, your station. Do you have an hour to spare? Then come volunteer. We always need help with something. Call me or send us an email or stop by for a visit and in the lower level of Eno Memorial Hall. You can find out how easy it is to be part of local community TV. If you missed anything in this program, you can watch this and all the other programs produced at our, our website, simsburytv.org. That's it for this week. I'm Karen Hanville, and we are SCTV, your town, your schools, your government. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.